Yep, that's me. You're probably wondering how I got in this situation. Ying Flash lying behind a kitchen counter in round 9 of a ranked match. To be honest though, that's a bit of a long story, and I don't have much time before Ying walks up without a care in the world and decimates me, clearing sight and leaving their team in an almost assured victory. <laughs> Never mind, she's just bad. Hello and welcome back to an Epic Wombat, and I uh, did a little bit of off-camera grinding since the last video. I know I'd only finally hit silver back when that released, but it's been three months since then, so I've improved at the game at least slightly. I'm the one out, eh? Slightly. Now listen up, because I know some of you watching this video have been hardstuck gold since the Cambrian era. To be fair, I've been hardstuck gold for three years on console, so I can't really talk, but let me show you what I did to solo queue to plat after being silver on PC last season. And even if you're already plat, emerald, or diamond, maybe something I did will help you improve as well. The first thing you need to do, and I cannot stress this enough, is to not have potato aim. Duh, I know, obviously you need to have decent aim, but I don't think people mention this enough when talking about how to get better at Siege. I think it gets glossed over a lot because it's the easiest skill to practice, but Siege is still an FPS game with one-shot headshots, so not focusing on your aim is a lot like walking outside at 2am while the Parsippany Troy Hill's big goober is around. It doesn't matter if you have good game sense if they just kill you first. For me, this was a bit of a long process, as any of my friends would tell you my aim has historically not been very good, but I used a combination of three different things to take my aim to the next level. First, and most obviously, is the Siege shooting range. I'm playing Siege, so being able to use Siege guns is kind of a necessity. Usually I just spend 10 to 30 minutes warming up before I grind ranked, and I'll try and get in practice with at least three different guns. Next up is also an obvious one, Aim Labs. I mean, it's not the most interesting game I've ever played, but you will improve your aim. However, I think the game that helped me the most was somehow Splitgate. Are you serious? I know, I know, but hear me out for a second. For those of you that don't know what Splitgate is, it's a fat FPS game from a couple years ago where you play generic shooter game modes with portals. But the thing is, a lot of the time you're not really using the portals that much, and the game just comes down to who can aim better. This game is almost entirely about aiming, and honestly it might somehow be the most helpful thing I've found so far throughout this journey. That being said, there are other things you need to do before you can get past the low plat players gatekeeping your ranked games. Next up on the list is callouts. If you are genuinely serious about ranking up in this game, you have to be giving callouts. I've seen so many rounds won or lost by who gave callouts and who didn't. If you see someone on cams, call it out. If you die to someone, call it out. If their thatcher is out of EMPs, call it out. If their warden farts near a window, call it out. If your teammates are being toxic, mute them and continue giving callouts. If you don't know what something's called, the compass will show you the name of the room you're in, and it will also show you the name of the room that your ping is in as well. The compass even shows up on kill cams, so you can use that to call stuff out too. A lot of the time, you giving callouts will also encourage your teammates to give callouts, which just gives you a major advantage over the other team if they don't have communication. Another thing you're going to have to practice is your game sense, which is a term that gets thrown around a lot, but essentially it's just knowing what to do when and what's happening around you. You see this fuse? He's staring down a crossfire if he decides to jump in the wall and will lose every single time. However, he has plenty of time left, so maybe he can rotate somewhere more advantageous to maybe turn the situation into two 1v1s. Good job. He did not. This is definitely not an example of good game sense. A better example might be what I did in this situation. We had a shield and a crossfire, so as long as we don't peek, we win. So I don't peek him. And we win. Now in terms of how you improve your game sense, there are really two main ways. The first is to just play the game a lot. Eventually you'll learn what to do and what not to do in different situations if you go through them enough times. The other way though is to watch players who are better than you play the game. They already know what to do in different situations, so watching them play can help you see what you need to do. For me, this involved binging the entire past year and a half of Macy J's content. His videos have definitely been super helpful for at least learning what I should be doing in a given match, but maybe someone else will work better for you. A big part of game sense that I haven't touched on yet is the ability to clutch. Again, Macy J is a great resource to learn how to do this as a lot of his videos are just him clutching 1vx's. Essentially, the idea is to split a 1vx into multiple 1v1's, so you have a chance to win some gunfights. You usually have to play it aggressively, but players nowadays are prone to swinging you for no reason, so you have to learn when to swing and when not to swing. Also, use all of your available resources. Drone people. Wallbang them. Pre-fire them. It is siege after all. Oh, I am the best player in this game. I love you. I love you. And on the flip side, you have to stop losing XV1s, as you should be winning almost every one of them. 
A great tip I heard from, I think it was Athena maybe, is to just act like you're in a 1v1, even when you have more teammates. This isn't strictly true, as if you have a crossfire with a teammate you should be holding that, but either way you shouldn't be swinging them and throwing for no reason. The last thing I'd talk about gameplay-wise that you have to do is play with your team, but to be honest I've been solo queuing for this journey so team play hasn't really been too big of a thing. My advice would be if your team is trying to do something specific, say like open a certain wall, you should probably help them. That being said, there is some stuff I want to talk about in terms of your mental, because the only way you're going to improve is if you actually want to. Some games you're just going to lose because you have bad teammates and you're going to have to accept that. But you're also going to lose games because of yourself. That you might still have to realize. Yeah, sure, your teammate might have lost the round when they whiffed in the 1v1, but you lost the round just as much when you swung the ash for no reason and died in the 3v1. If you were playing perfectly, you wouldn't be losing no matter how bad your teammates are. So just figure out what you did wrong and move on. Don't yell at your team and call them trash, don't be toxic in all chat, just move on. If you really are good enough to hit the rank you're going for, one game won't make a difference. The other part of your mental game is motivation, and that's really more of a player specific thing. I struggled with it during parts of the grind, namely when I went 1-8 over a 9 game period after first hitting gold. That wasn't really fun, but you're not going to get better by not playing the game, and I wasn't either. There, and there it is. My first time ever solo queuing to Plat. Oh my god, that's so hype. And I, got, I went 0-1 in my Plat game. At the end of the day, I still haven't hit my goal yet of getting to champ, but honestly, I've made a lot of progress so far. If you go back and watch my first video in this series, I'm a far better player now than I was then. Like, this hurts to watch. The issue I face now, though, is that I'm gonna have to take a bit of a hiatus from this series, at least for a couple months. I'll explain it more in a video that should be releasing soon, but essentially I'm moving and then Elden Ring DLC is supposedly going to release, which I am going to be making a video or two on, so yeah, sorry about that. Still though, subscribe if you want to be notified when I do continue this series, as I still have a lot to do before I hit champ. Anyways, if you have any other advice on how to improve at Siege, or even FPSs in general, throw it in the comments below. And if you want to try and get better at Siege, might as well start now. There's no point in waiting. Thanks for watching.